Hey, Dustin. What's up, brother? Good to see you. You too. How are you doing? Great, man. Um, so obviously the longest layoff of your career coming into this fight, 11 months. Um, just how frustrating has it been? Exciting to be back? Just the emotions of the last 11 months since the title fight? Since the title fight at the beginning, I was a little frustrated trying to get a fight, you know. And then life happens and you get busy. You know, I have a, a lot of things that I'm involved with and a lot of fighters I work with back home in Louisiana. So I was in the gym helping them, you know, learning. Like I said, the first couple months was I was getting aggravated with the weight, with not hearing anything, and then things just kind of fell into place. Yeah, and I had the chance to speak with Mike Brown recently, and he said he's never seen you so motivated and um, you know just in such a good place with the improvements you made. Where do you think that comes from? Because you know you could uh, the emotion you had after the fight with Oliveira, it seemed like maybe you were at a crossroads of whether you wanted to keep doing this. So how did you find that motivation within yourself? Yeah, immediately after the fight, you know, I was just heartbroken. Um, but fighting is what I do. Um, but I'm always motivated. I'm always motivated. This one, I'm just very focused. Is that something just about the, the matchup, the opponent, or is this all kind of about you in this moment? It's all about me. Yeah, it has nothing to do with anybody outside of that, you know, any opponent or circumstance or anything. Yeah, you like the fact that you get to kind of show you can bounce back again, though, right, from a tough moment? Every, it seems like you've talked about that a fair bit. For sure, yeah, every, every time. Um, bouncing back, riding, riding the ship, all those things are very important. And we had uh, Michael in here earlier, and I've heard him say in some other interviews that he's, you know, he said he thinks you're the best boxer in the UFC, but he also said he thinks that in some ways you're maybe not the most complicated puzzle. Um, what would you kind of say to that and that assessment of your game? It is what it is. I mean, I think I do a lot of things very well. And uh, some big news today. You're the official hot sauce sponsor of the UFC. Um, how long has this been in the works, and what was kind of your reaction to that being dropped during your fight week? We planned to announce it during fight week, but it's been in the works for months. You know, it was a long process with my hot sauce team and the UFC's um, team, but we got, we got it all done, and I'm, I'm happy to announce it. I'm happy to make it official. Yeah, what, what can that kind of do for, you know, the brand and just everything that, you know, may come out of that financially, exposure-wise, everything like that? We'll see. We'll see how much exposure we get from it. But um, it's great. You know, I think the sauce being launched um, in my fighting career, a career that I fought, you know, majority of it in the UFC, having this product that was kind of developed during that time, it's just a cool um, relationship to have and to be the official sponsor now. And just last thing for me, um, you know, since the last fight there has been a title change, we obviously have Makachev now. Um, when you have, you know, Oliver as the champ, maybe the road to getting back there isn't as clear, but you being a fresh contender to Islam, does that, you know, give you any extra drive or motivation or maybe a clearer idea of what this fight means in the overall scheme of your career? Nothing's ever clear in this sport, man, um, especially in the lightweight division, but it definitely opens up doors. You know, there's new opportunities Different fights make sense now. New opponents, you, you know, uh, we'll see. But none of that matters until Saturday night. Dustin, over here. Dustin, over here. Uh, you've been in the UFC for a long time. You faced so many top contenders. Uh, some fights, it's, it's done, not personal. Some fights, it seems personal. I, I could be wrong, but this fight seems like it's on the personal side. If so, why? Every fight is a bit personal to me. You know, we're going to go in there and try to hurt each other. That's every fight. Um, but it's just business. It's just business as always. Does uh, Michael bring anything to the cage that you haven't seen before? Nothing that I haven't seen, but he does a few things very well. You know, he's very athletic, very explosive, covers distance well, throws big power, can wrestle well, and has a lot of high level experience, you know. Uh, Michael talked about he thinks the winner of this fight probably gets a title shot. But we had Alex Volkanovsky here. You know, he's moving up. What are your thoughts about him in the division? We'll see. Um, we'll see how he fills out and, and how he stacks up against guys that are lightweight. I know he, he gets heavy or was heavy in, in, in his past, but uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure. We'll see when he, when he starts competing. He's a hell of a fighter for sure. Good luck to you. Thanks. Dustin, what is your uh, opinion on Michael at the moment? Obviously, you guys had that run in by the cage a while back, and it looks a bit fractious, obviously. But how do you feel about him now? I know you guys had that sort of split screen interview with DC. Do you, have you calmed down towards him, or are you still sort of feeling like you know he's coming to the promotion a little bit ahead of himself? I mean, he's definitely 
had a, a great career and beat some really high level guys. Um, I don't know if he's ahead of himself, but that whole thing was about just him. Him, I thought he was a little fake in in some interviews and stuff like that. That's what that whole thing was about. Do you think that's something that could maybe not like get, could get squashed after this fight? Like you have the fight, you win the fight, and then those issues go away, or are they still going to be there? And you just have your personal opinion on him? Yeah, I, I honestly don't know him personally. I just know know him from experience of had run-ins with him in converse, small conversations at different events, and then. I see interviews he does and asks about me or things just are different. Um, but we'll see. You know, I, I'll shake his hand for sure. But I know that fight with Nate Diaz was one you wanted for ages and they kind of sort of teased you with it and then they just it kept sort of disappearing. Now he's left the UFC. Is that going to be a regret that you never did? Or did his fight against Tony sort of make you think, you know what, that's a fight I didn't really need? No, I, I've always wanted to fight Nate. You know, this... We tried to make it happen a few times. You know, it always fell apart. Um, it sucks that he's gone now, and I won't get that chance uh, to fight him. But it is what it is. Sport moves on. Dustin, back center here. Right here. Yep. Uh, this is gonna be your first fight in five years that wasn't scheduled to be five rounds. Uh, have you trained any differently, knowing that you know only have 15 minutes max to do this? No, I trained the exact same way as I did for all those five round fights. Whenever I'm peaking and in the best condition I can get myself in, I'm ready to fight however many rounds there are. I just I, tra I train the same way in preparation. And uh, it being three rounds, do you think that benefits you or him more? I think it benefits uh, him, for sure. I wanted it to be five. And uh, last one. Uh, I mean, lightweight's always been extremely stacked. Now you have Benel, Dariush on a win streak. You have Charles Oliveira still in the picture. Uh, now Volkanovski moving up to, to fight for the title. After this win, what do you think pushes you in the forefront to earn a title shot next? I'm not sure. Whatever the next contender is, I have no clue. You know, the landscape's always changing. But first things first, I have to get my hand raised Saturday night. Listen here at the back. Uh, well, just two quick ones in the front right here. Actually, Dustin, right here. Uh, unrelated to your fight, but I've been asking everyone at Media Day this. Uh, this might be Frank Edgar's last fight uh, in his MMA career. You've obviously been fighting for a long time. He's one of the few fighters on this roster fighting longer than you. So were you a fan of his your whole career, and do you have any memories of Frankie throughout Of his course. Career? I've been a big fan of Frankie for a long time. Had a great opportunity years ago to go out to Tom's River and train with him when he was preparing for Ben Henderson, be a sparring partner, and you know watch the way he works. and. It was awesome. It was a good time in my career to to, to go through that with him. And but he, when I made my UFC debut, he was main eventing yeah. in Madison. I mean, in a MGM Grand in Las Vegas. It's just crazy, man. Time flies. And then, uh, do you have any thoughts on the main event between Izzy and Alex Pajeda? I'm excited for that, man. I don't I don't know which way that one's gonna go. I'm excited to see how it unfolds. Um, Dustin, here at the back. Oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. Oh, sorry. Just quickly, um, Michael said that. He's expecting this to be a slugfest. Do you see that's how it's going to go down? If it does, I'm going to clean him up. You know, he knows deep down he doesn't want to do that. And um, of course, your last fight, you came up short against Charles Oliveira. What was your reaction to him losing the title to Islam? I was surprised. You know, I didn't have a dog in the fight, but I, I thought Charles was going to get it done. But congrats to Islam. He's a world champ. And what's your opinion about him as a champion, obviously being top of the division now? Tough guy, on a streak. Looks like he's putting everything together, doing everything right. You know, what, what bad can I say about him? And uh, in terms of how you would match up against him, how, you know, how, do, how would you see that going down? I'm not sure. Saturday's first things first, um, you know, and then we'll start looking at matchups. Thank you. Dustin, here at the back, um, over here. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of your career has been linked to, to, to Conor McGregor and there's talks maybe he won't come back. People are, are concerned about him bulking up. He certainly won't be back at, at lightweight anytime soon. Do you believe that by the time you hang up your gloves, you will have had a fourth fight with him? I'm not sure, man. You never know in this sport. I don't know, if, he, like you said, if he's coming back. What weight class? I'm not sure. I never say never, but it's not looking like it in, in, in the near future. Is welterweight something that, that interests you, and particularly, yeah, like if, if he does decide to come back, I would think that he would be someone high up on, uh, on, on your list of people you'd want to get in there with again? We'll see. I mean, I fought him three times. I'm trying to get to the title, you know. Thank you. Over Dustin. here, Dustin. What's up, man? What's up? 
Um, how long did it take for you to pick up the pieces? Because you said your heart was broken after the last title fight. So what, what was like that journey for you? Just getting back to back home, you know, after a long training camp, getting back home, time heals all. Heals all. Just getting back in the gym, one step at a time, having fun with it again, focus on what matters in my life and reasons that I'm fighting and, and things like that. It's, it's just been a long process. So kind of just like reassessing your mentality? Yeah. yeah. And uh, also, uh, can you tell us if the Good Fight Foundation got anything going on for Thanksgiving? Yeah, thanks for asking. We're doing 500 family meal pickups, so full meal for families with a tin to put it, like to bake it all in, hams, bread rolls, greens, uh, a few sides. It's going to be 500 first come, first serve. And we're also doing a women and children's shelter in Lafayette, Louisiana. We're doing presents for all the children there for uh, Christmas morning. So it's kind of a dual goal that we set. Yeah, those, those kids should wake up and have presents to open. It's great work, man. Thank you. Thank you. Justin, right here. Um, in your career, you've never lost two in a row. Coming off a loss and going into this fight, is that something that you think about? It's something that's in the back of my head. You know, I'd love to keep that trend going, obviously, and bounce back and, and show that I can overcome and improve. And I think even over, after wins, I've, show, I've come in and shown new wrinkles in the game and improvements. But this is just another one of those those moments where I can show growth and show my dedication to the sport by putting on a good performance. Perfect. And, uh, you know, you've had a lot of big moments in your career, especially over the past couple of years, the wins over McGregor, a uh, lot of big moments. At this point, after all of that, is there anything in the octagon professionally you think that could top that? Become an undisputed world champion. You know, it's the highest of the high. That, that's, that can top all of those. Thank you. Hi, Dustin, over here in the back. Uh, you have one of the best walkout songs in the business with uh, The Boss by James Brown. Uh, what other songs do you listen to during fight camp? What gets you up in the morning? I listen to a lot of, uh, you know, funky old school stuff, James Brown, Rick James. But I also listen to a lot of hip hop during training camp. Uh, what's up? Somebody said something? Yeah, I got something for you. What's though? up? How are you doing? Stan the Man from Menace and the Man. So you're one of the most successful lightweights in UFC history. You've been in there with Khabib, who some might say is the GOAT. We talked about Frankie Edgar, who some people think is the best. Who's the greatest lightweight of all time, according to Dustin Poirier? Man, that's a tough one because the legacy goes back so far. Uh, of all time, I mean, most dominating has to be Khabib, right? But what gets me... What gets me mad is we don't even bring up Eve Edwards' name when we talk about the best lightweights of all time. You know, he was uncrowned lightweight champion of the world when he beat Josh Thompson. That highlight we see every show opening of him having his back and turning away with that head kick. That was the championship. You know, I think his name should be brought up in these conversations. Oh, for sure. And then, so speaking of Eves, what are the chances? Like, did you game plan? Are you expecting Chandler to take this fight to the ground? Are we going to see some thug jitsu from you on Saturday? From the moment that bell rings, it's thug jitsu all day, every fight. No matter if we kickbox, fight in the parking lot, do jiu-jitsu or wrestle, every time that bell rings, it's thug jitsu. And uh, Eve is a good buddy of mine. He actually came down to Louisiana before training camp started, and we got some rounds in and stuff. He's out in Texas helping young fighters and, and Still growing the thug jitsu community, man. Yes, I love Eves. I spent the whole UFC Long Island with Eves. Yeah, he's a man. Yeah, speaks very highly of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.